Okay, good morning and welcome to today's Finance Committee meeting. My name is Councilmember Daniel Drum and I'm the chair of the committee. I'd like to introduce my colleagues. We're joined by Councilmember Adrian Adams, Councilmember Helen Rosenthal, Councilmember Keith Powers, Councilmember Steve Matteo, Councilmember Andy Cohen, Councilmember Barry Grudenchik. Thank you all for being here. Today the committee will be voting on five items. Proposed intro 1143A, proposed intro 1038A, a transparency resolution, and two Article 11 property tax exemptions. Let's start with introductions. First, we have proposed intro 1143A, which I have sponsored. The bill will establish three new types of income-based installment agreements available to low-income homeowners earning up to $58,399 a year where the property is their primary residence. Currently, when a property owner owes property tax, uh, property tax arrears, they can enter into an installment agreement with the DOF in order to pay back the amount owed over time. If you are in an installment agreement, then your property won't be included in the lien sale. The agreements can be entered into for a period up to 10 years with as little as zero dollars in down payment, but the amount of each installment is calculated without regard to income or ability to pay. As a result, many property owners cannot actually afford the payments and end up defaulting, which bars them from entering into another payment plan for at least five years. According to the Department of Finance, the default rate in fiscal 2018 was 46.5%, meaning that nearly half of the people in installment agreements could not afford to keep up with them. In order to help those homeowners who are working with the city to resolve their debt, keep up with their taxes and avoid the lien sale in an affordable way, the bill will create three new plans. First, and most significantly, is the senior plan that will allow seniors to defer paying some or all of their property tax payments until their property is sold or otherwise transferred. Then the city would be reimbursed for the amount of taxes it is owed from the proceeds of the sale. This is the first time in the city's history that it has offered a property tax deferral program, and I'm really proud to be a part of this effort. The other two plans would be available to other low-income homeowners, with the key feature being that the amount of the payments would be calculated based on a percentage of the homeowner's income. In that way, we will be setting these homeowners up for success rather than likely failure. The new installment agreements will be rolled out by the Department of Finance this spring in time for the next lien sale, and the bill requires DOF to do outreach to maximize public awareness of the plans. Getting to this point has been a multi-year effort, with the Council first proposing the idea for income-based payment plans as part of the Joint Council Administration Lean Sale Task Force. Thanks to the advocacy of the Council members who served on that task force, Council members Cornegy, Rose, and Richards, and former Council member and Finance Chair Ferris's Copeland. Excuse me, Ferreras Copeland. The task force recommended that programs be implemented to modify the existing payment plans to make them more flexible and affordable. Propo proposed intro 1143A embodies that guiding principle and creates three plans that will certainly provide significant relief to struggling seniors and other low-income home homeowners as they try to ju uh, juggle their bills, pay their property taxes, and afford to stay in their homes. A huge thank you to Finance Commissioner Jacques Gia and the entire DOF team for their willingness to work with the Council to craft the specifics of these payment plans and for fighting to make them as inclusive and generous as possible. Thank you also to the Administration as a whole for its commitment to continue working with the Council to address other hurdles facing struggling low-income homeowners, including the interest burden that grows even as homeowners are willing to pay down their debt. And last, thank you to the Council Finance Division staff who worked on this bill. Senior Counsel Rebecca Chasen, Assistant Director Emra Edev, Senior Economist Davis Winslow, Assistant Counsel Stephanie Ruiz, and Finance Analyst Massis Sarkissian. Next, we have proposed intro 1038A, sponsored by Councilmember Grodenchik. 
This bill would increase the threshold for when an income producing property is required to provide a statement of income and expense certified by a certified public accountant in order to receive an assessment reduction by the tax commission. Currently, income producing properties with an assessed value of $1 million or more are required to submit such certification. This, this threshold was first set by local law 1973 and has not been adjusted since then. In order to update this amount to reflect today's values, this bill would increase the threshold to properties with an assessed value of $5 million or more, indexed every five years to the overall assessments in class two and class four. So, and with that, I wanna give an opportunity to Council Member Grudenchik to speak to the legislation. Thank you, uh, Chair Drum, and uh, thank you for your help in moving this bill along. Um, this bill really is, is just common sense legislation that will allow small businesses uh, in the city of New York uh, not to have to pay an onerous amount to uh, certified uh, public accountants. Um, I am told uh, by my council, who is SEC trained, and by others, that at a minimum, the certified financials cost $10,000 a year. Uh, we are freeing an estimated 1,800 businesses from this, so if you do the math quickly, that's $18 million. It's probably more in the 20 to $25 million range that we will be saving small businesses in the city of New York. And I'm of the opinion that every 46 years or so, these laws need to be updated. So uh, the other important thing that we're, we're doing is so that uh, future councils don't have to deal with this, is that we are finally putting in a cost of living increase in indexing uh, just as the federal government does, as the IRS does, Social Security. Uh, there will now be an index which will uh, be reviewed every five years, and we will make those adjustments. Future city governments will make those adjustments. So uh, on behalf of, uh, of the 1,800 businesses that will now be able to pay for such things as health care and maybe more vacation time for their employees or, or whatever benefits that may accrue to them, I'm delighted that we're passing this legislation and I urge all my colleagues to vote yes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Next is the transparency resolution, which sets forth the new designations and changes in the designation of certain organizations receiving local and youth discretionary funding and funding pursuant to certain initiatives in the budget. Organizations appearing in the resolution have not yet completed, that have not yet completed the pre-qualification -qual pre process conducted by the Mayor's Office of Contract Services, the Council or another entity are identified in the attached charts with an asterisk. As with all transparency resolutions, Council members will have to sign a disclosure form indicating whether or not a conflict exists with any of the groups on the attached list. If any Council member has a potential conflict of interest with any of the organizations listed, he or she has the opportunity to disclose the conflict at the time of their vote. As a reminder, please disclose any conflicts you may have with the proposed subcontractors used by organizations sponsored by discretionary funding. These disclosures must be made before the subcontractor can be approved. Benjamin Smith from the General Counsel's Office is here and can assist you with any questions or concerns regarding the disclosures. Lastly, we have two Article 11 property tax exemptions both of which are in Council Member Idanis Rodriguez's district in Manhattan. The first is Fort George HDFC, which would require partial 40-year exemption to preserve 45 units of affordable rental housing. The second is 9-21 Sherman Avenue, which would receive a full 40-year exemption to preserve 92 units of affordable rental housing. Council Member Rodriguez is supportive of these actions. Those are all of today's items. Are there any questions? Okay, with that, I'm going to ask um, the clerk, Billy, is it Billy Morton? Oh, okay. Okay, all right, so we'll hold until we get our clerk. It gives me time to sign. Oh yes, if you, we could do a disclosure. We could actually form a team if you want. We could have a... Well, council members. Yeah. Do that too. That was fun. Yellow Brick. Yellow Brick. Uh, the, is the only, he has the only archery range in the city of New York in his yeah, district. I see five years of housing. Actually, the picture of the day was me and you on the merry-go-round. That was classic. Like that, that was a classic. <laughs> yes, sir. We're ready to go, and our clerk, Burley Martin, is here, and I'm going to ask him to call the roll. 
William Martin, committee clerk, roll call vote committee on finance. All items are coupled. Chair Drum. I vote aye. Cohen. Aye. Cumbo. Aye. Rosenthal. With congratulations to Grudencheck um, and to the chair for all your hard work, I vote aye on all. Grudencheck. Thank you for those congratulations, and I vote aye on all. Powers. Aye. Matteo. Yes. Moya. Aye. By a vote of eight in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstentions. All items have been adopted. <laughs> Councilmember Adams, excuse me. You are excused. Um, congratulations to my colleague, uh, Councilmember Grudenchik. Mr. Chair, for all the hard work that you've done on this bill, we're very proud of you and proud of the passage. I vote aye. Vote is, uh, all items on today's agenda have been adopted by a vote of nine in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstentions. Okay, I'm going to ask that we can hold the vote open for another 10 minutes or so. Thank you.